Is there more to the world than what we experience with our five senses? Do miracles really happen or do our minds trick us? Right now on Jewish Voice with Jonathan Burnus. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, where we help you to discover the Jewish roots of your Christian faith. I'm Jonathan Bernis. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to explore compelling evidence for the supernatural with some people who have experienced it firsthand. What do the scriptures really say about miraculous events that defy explanation? It's a fascinating subject and one I examine in my new book, A Rabbi Looks at the Supernatural. Rabbi Jonathan Bernis grew up in a traditional Jewish home and was bar mitzvahed at 13. He was warned about Christians in high school, especially the born again kind. But in college, as Jonathan experimented with drugs and various cults, a friend invited him to a Bible study it was there he met his Messiah in an astonishing way. More about how I met Yeshua in a minute because I'm not the only one who had a supernatural encounter with Yeshua. Let me introduce our first guest. He's Rabbi Eric Tokajer, and I want to welcome him to the program. A longtime friend. It's great to be here. And ministry partner. I love having other Jewish believers on the program because we all have similar testimonies. We were raised, told that Jesus was the God of Christianity, us and them, and then we had a supernatural experience in some way, shape, or form that brought us into this great relationship. But like me, you uh, prepared for your bar mitzvah. Correct. You entered into adulthood at age 13 when you read from the, the, the Torah. And uh, then what became of your Judaism? What was your view of well, Judaism? Well, my family was very active in the synagogue. And after my bar mitzvah, you know, up until your bar mitzvah, you pretty well learn how to be Jewish and how to say the traditional prayers and how to read Hebrew and the history of the Jewish people and primarily on the Holocaust and things like that. Then after your bar mitzvah, you actually begin to study the scriptures in Hebrew high school or yeshiva or something above that where you actually start breaking into the word. And when I did, I started reading things, for instance, in Leviticus, where it said there had to be a sacrifice every year to cover the sins of Israel. And yet there wasn't a sacrifice happening anymore. So I began to ask the rabbis, my rabbi, and then other rabbis as time went on, the question, how are Israel's sins covered? Let me stop there for a second because this is so critical. It's really important to understand that that concept has, has been all but eliminated from Jewish faith, that you need a temple, Absolutely. that you need a sacrificial system, when in fact that's why Yeshua shed his blood, to fulfill exactly. the sacrificial system. Exactly. So at that point I started looking around, looking at more scripture, finding things that really confused me more than anything else, made me question, and I became agnostic. And I was 17 and I joined the Navy, and in Millington, Tennessee, on the base that I was at, they were playing Christmas music all over the base. Well, that offended me, even though I was an agnostic Jew and I really wasn't practicing, I didn't want to listen to what I considered Christian music everywhere I went. So I put in a request to have it stopped on the base, and it was. As a result of that, the people in my unit uh, got upset about it, and they gave me what's known as a blanket party, uh, which is where they th basically throw a blanket over your head and everybody beats on you. After that took One place- One person didn't, didn't participate. Right, though. after that took Why? place, a young man named Scott, who's still a friend of mine today, um, Said, came up to me and said, I didn't participate and I want you to know. And I asked why. He said, because I'm a Christian. And I responded to him by saying, what difference does that make? Christians have been killing Jews for 2,000 years. And so that led up to him leading, uh, asking me for nine months we went through Bible study. And at the end of nine months we'd moved from Millington to Pensacola. He was going to a church and he invited me to come to a Bible study. And at the Bible study we were sitting down together and there were about 100 people there. And the Bible study teacher said, turn to 1 John chapter uh, 14, verse 7. And then he immediately said, turn to Corinthians or Galatians. One of those books, I'm not sure which one, because I didn't know any of them at the time. And so I elbowed my buddy and I said, what are we doing here? This guy doesn't even know what he's doing. Tell us to read this, do that, and doesn't even talk about it. And he said, well, maybe that was for you. And he handed me the Bible. 
And it was the verse that said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, how show, it, say, say, and show us the Father. And, and the whole interaction between Yeshua and his disciples saying he and the Father are one, which was the last question I had in becoming a believer. So, so you had a supernatural experience in that Bible study. Absolutely. And that night I became a believer. Powerful. I, Bible study changed my life as well. God is a supernatural working God. Do you think there's supernatural power in every verse of the scripture? Absolutely. Absolutely, I do. The, the thing is that each verse is supernatural. Each verse is God breathed. But it depends on where we're looking at it, how we're looking at it to see that. You can read the same verse over and over, and then one day it kind of comes alive to you. And that's the moment that I believe God speaks to you supernaturally through that verse. Powerful. And He's been speaking to you for the last 30, 33 plus years. Absolutely. Thir since, almost 35 since now. Since 1981. What a beautiful testimony. It's a blessing. Supernatural testimony. Thank you, Rabbi Eric. Up next, a world-class musician who stopped chasing the spotlight to embrace the light of the world. His encounter with the supernatural is just ahead. And later, I'll be answering audience questions about the supernatural. Stay with us. Is there a supernatural realm where angels and demons operate? Do a literal heaven and hell really exist? If God is so powerful, why did Satan get so strong? Rabbi Jonathan Burnus answers these and other tough questions in his new book, A Rabbi Looks at the Supernatural. Using both Old and New Testament scripture, Rabbi Burnus provides a sound biblical view on dozens of supernatural topics. I wanted to clear up misconceptions about the supernatural, about heaven and hell, angels and demons, and that's why I wrote A Rabbi Looks at the Supernatural. Get it today, it's fresh off the press. Put an end to your confusion about the spirit world. Understand how angels and demons operate in your life and the lives of your family and friends. Learn about the supernatural work God wants to do for you. Don't wait. Order A Rabbi Looks at the Supernatural now. When you do, we'll sow a special gift into your life. The Hold My Hand Audio CD by Rodrigo Rodriguez. As you listen to this renowned classical guitarist, you will enter a supernatural place of peace and joy. This is my favorite CD, Hold My Hand. That's why I want to keep holding Jesus' hand. Get it today. For your gift of $40 or more, we'll send you both of these important resources. For your gift of $100 or more, you will get a hand-endorsed and signed copy of A Rabbi Looks at the Supernatural. So call now. When you do, you'll be taking an important step toward improving your life and helping our ministry improve the lives of Jewish people worldwide with crucial medical, dental, and eye care. Most importantly, you are helping Jewish communities and their neighbors from Argentina to the Ukraine to Africa learn that their Messiah, Jesus, has come. Remember, God said he will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Your donation of $40 or more will bless the Jewish people, and you'll get these two important resources. For your donation of $100 or more, you will get a hand-endorsed and signed copy of A Rabbi Looks at the Supernatural. Call the number on your screen now to partner with Jewish Voice Ministries. You can also click or write with your gift of support by going to our website, jvmi.tv, or writing to us at Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. Please specify offer 1563 when giving $40 or more, or specify offer 1566 when giving $100 or more. Call, click, or write today. Today we're talking about the supernatural, and it's because hot off the press, and I literally mean this, it just came out, my newest book, A Rabbi Looks at the Supernatural, and we're looking today at how God uses the supernatural to get our attention. Our next guest is a world-class musician who once pursued earthly fame and fortune, but now he's after heavenly treasure. Meet Rodrigo Rodriguez. Welcome back, Rodrigo. Thank you, Jonathan. I think you have the best stage name in the world, Rodrigo well, Rodriguez. It, it, you, you have to roll the R's. You do, and I, I love that. I learned that from 
Ruffles have ridges. <laughs> so Rodrigo Rodriguez. I love the name. Thank More you. importantly, I love you and I love the wonderful gift that God Thank has you. given you. Now, I, you. I, I've never interviewed you before, but you have a fascinating testimony. You grew up in Ecuador mm -hmm. and you recorded your first album at age 12. Yes. Right? Wow. How do you do that at age 12? And, but your, and your family wasn't religious. Talk about your upbringing. You know, I grew up in a uh, non-religious environment, going uh, to churches and Easter and, and Christmas. So I grew up thinking that God was a man's invention. Everything was God for me, the moon, the stars. So then let's fast forward to t about 23 years ago. You're in your late 30s and a friend invites you to church. This friend was my agent. Uh, uh, this oh, guy in charge so, of my music business. So, so you had to go. Well, <laughs> if I, you I, wanted you gigs, know, you had to go. Ex well, you know, I was <laughs> refusing in the beginning. I told this guy, "Listen, you are my agent. You are in charge of my music. I don't need nothing else. Guitar is my all. Be all I need. So if work, if God works for you, good for you. But you know, just leave me alone." And this guy said, "Rodrigo, if you go with me to church one time, one time, I will stop." to telling you about God. So I was thinking if I go with this crazy man for an hour, <laughs> then Get it over he's going with, right? to leave Get me it alone. Over with. And I went to Costa Mesa Calvary Chapel, Pastor Chuck Smith, an amazing teacher. Everything that Chuck spoke that day came to my heart in an amazing way. And I understood the gospel the way how I should. So did you accept the Lord that day? No, not that day. But you know, the next Sunday, I went by myself. Ah, you went back, huh? And the next Sunday, I, I, I think after three weeks, when Chuck did an altar calling, I get up and I came and said, God, I'm here. You had a supernatural moment with the Lord, though, that changed everything. Yeah, you, you know, uh, I, was, uh, I was playing First Baptist Church in Sarasota, Florida. And usually when I play the guitar, I close my eyes. And it's not necessarily to show the people that I can play with my eyes closed, you know. <laughs> I was closing my, I was playing Shout to the Lord. And by the way, Shout to the Lord is the first song that I arrange of sacred music or Christian music, however you, uh, you want to call. And I was playing Shout to the Lord, close, closing my eyes, and I hear this amazing choir, four parts choir, singing Shout to the Lord. So I was uh, smiling, I, I was thinking, man, these people know how to sing. Probably all the congregation, they sing in the choir of this church. And I was, it was uh, the perfect harmony. And, and I opened my eyes to give them a, you know, a, a, an acceptance. And I opened my eyes and everybody was quiet. If nobody was moving their lips. And that was a, a, a time with it is, is a, never happened again, I, I tell you. But this is like the Lord saying, Rodrigo, I like your music, but more I like than my, your music, I like the, the, the sense of your music, who you are playing to. Now you're in for a treat. This master guitarist is gonna perform the song that triggered a heavenly chorus right after the break. Is there a supernatural realm where angels and demons operate? Do a literal heaven and hell really exist? If God is so powerful, why did Satan get so strong? Rabbi Jonathan Burnus answers these and other tough questions in his new book, A Rabbi Looks at the Supernatural. Using both Old and New Testament scripture, Rabbi Burnus provides a sound biblical view on dozens of supernatural topics. I wanted to clear up misconceptions about the supernatural, about heaven and hell, angels and demons, and that's why I wrote A Rabbi Looks at the Supernatural. Get it today, it's fresh off the press. Put an end to your confusion about the spirit world. Understand how angels and demons operate in your life and the lives of your family and friends. Learn about the supernatural work God wants to do for you. Don't wait. Order A Rabbi Looks at the Supernatural now. When you do, we'll sow a special gift into your life. The Hold My Hand Audio CD by Rodrigo Rodriguez. As you listen to this renowned classical guitarist, you will enter a supernatural place of peace and joy. This is my favorite CD, Hold My Hand. That's why I want to keep holding Jesus' hand. 
Get it today. For your gift of $40 or more, we'll send you both of these important resources. For your gift of $100 or more, you will get a hand endorsed and signed copy of A Rabbi Looks at the Supernatural. So call now. When you do, you'll be taking an important step toward improving your life and helping our ministry improve the lives of Jewish people worldwide with crucial medical, dental, and eye care. Most importantly, you are helping Jewish communities and their neighbors from Argentina to the Ukraine to Africa learn that their Messiah, Jesus, has come. Remember, God said he will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Your donation of $40 or more will bless the Jewish people, and you'll get these two important resources. For your donation of $100 or more, you will get a hand-endorsed and signed copy of A Rabbi Looks at the Supernatural. Call the number on your screen now to partner with Jewish Voice Ministries. You can also click or write with your gift of support by going to our website, jvmi.tv, or writing to us at Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. Please specify offer 1563 when giving $40 or more, or specify offer 1566 when giving $100 or more. Call, click, or write today. Supernatural events are everywhere in Scripture, especially in the miracles of Yeshua. The Bible also talks about the miraculous power that is unleashed through giving. When you give, God actually multiplies the blessing in your life and the lives of others. Your financial support is helping countless Jewish communities in need. When you give, they receive hope and healing, and most importantly, they hear the good news that their Messiah has come. We are visiting a poor rural village in Ethiopia, a community that identifies as Beta Israel, one of the lost tribes of Israel. We're here to distribute thousands of life straws to the people living here. They come very sick in, in Jesus, name. Jesus' name. By Jesus' name. And most of them are sick because they can't get clean water. But we're doing something different today, something new. You see hundreds of people waiting in lines to go into what we call the water tent. It's there that they'll be given instruction on how to use the life straw, a simple water filter that takes out 99.9% .9 of the bacteria. The biggest problem in Ethiopia is clean water, and the solution is life straw. This is the poverty they live in. This is nothing more than a 15 by 15 room. No electricity, no plumbing whatsoever. They sleep in here, they eat in here. Uh, and they're, they're, they're in absolute poverty. We can't even imagine the kind of poverty they live in in the United States. Little Mita here, three years old, distended belly from malnutrition, but more from poor water. The quality of water here is very poor, it's polluted. And uh, the bacteria, the parasites cause this to happen. And so many of the people that come to our clinics are suffering from digestive problems. We can help them by giving them clean water. She's saying the previous water tasted muddy, it tasted dirty, and now she's drinking it through the life straw and it, it, she said it, it finally tastes good to our mouth. It tastes much better. And now we have a worship service. They're thanking the Lord for his divine provision. Now they'll have clean water that's safe to drink. We're thrilled to be able to be a blessing in this way. We've shared with the people that as they take each drink of water out of this life straw, they can remember the Lord's love for them and the love of his people for them. It's amazing. Jewish people in Ethiopia are hearing the gospel, some for the very first time because of your financial support. When you partner with Jewish Voice, you help us to provide life-saving water filters vital medical care, dental care, eye care to Jewish people in the poorest regions on earth. Most importantly, you help us to proclaim the good news of Yeshua with them. When you donate to this ministry, your 
changing lives worldwide. There's so much more to do and we need your help now. Ladies and gentlemen, here performing Shout to the Lord, Rodrigo Rodriguez. I have to tell you, I didn't hear any choir singing, but I did just hear heavenly music. Thank you, Rodrigo. Stay with us while I take some questions from our audience. It's time now for Ask the Rabbi. Okay, we have some questions now from our studio audience. Uh, stand up, tell us your name and your question. Yes, Jonathan, my name is Carolyn, and I am just wondering why God uses supernatural means to reach just some of us and not all of us. Carolyn, that's a great question, and, and this is my response. I think God deals with all of us supernaturally. I just think it's more evident just in, in some cases. When I talk about supernatural, God orchestrating people, events, opening our heart to when, we've, when it's been closed, like with Rodrigo and in my testimony, to the point where we heard the truth and our heart was ready to respond. Maybe not our mind, but our heart, because with the heart one believes. And looking back, hindsight they say is 2020. And as I look back and think of how all of that, all of these events were orchestrated leading up to that Bible study I went to 26, 36 years ago rather, that's supernatural. So I believe that God is dealing with us supernaturally and we need eyes to see. Sometimes they're common events, sometimes they're extraordinary, but they're supernatural. One more question. Stand up, tell us your name and your question. Hi, my name is Nan. And I'd like to know, do you think that supernatural phenomena occur as much today as they did in biblical times? That's a really good question too. And as one who travels around the world and particularly uh, spends a lot of time in places like Africa and Indian developing nations, I would say it depends. The, the answer is yes, by the way. 
but it depends where. In the Western world, America and Europe, uh, we, we aren't as open to miracles, and we aren't in, in need of miracles. We have a doctor, emergency room at our fingertips. In five minutes, we can be there. But in places like India and Ethiopia, in the bush of Zimbabwe, they have to rely on a, a supernatural healing, and their worldview is more open than ours to the supernatural, which answers a question you didn't ask. Why is there so many more healings outside of America, of Canada, the United States, uh, Europe, it's because of an openness to the supernatural realm. And uh, I'm hoping to see more miracles here in the United States and in Europe. Thanks for your questions. And if any of you have a question for us, you just go to jvmi.tv and you click on Ask the Rabbi. And who knows, maybe your question will be used in an upcoming program. Well, we're out of time for today, but before I go, I want to pray a special Hebrew blessing over you. This is a prayer that's been prayed over the people of Israel since the time of Moses and Aaron in the Exodus. It's called the Aaronic Benediction. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmarecha. Ya'er Adonai penave lecha v'chunecha. Isa Adonai penave lecha v'yasem lecha shalom. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, his peace, in the name of Sar Shalom. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Amen and amen. Remember, if you have a prayer need, we're here for you. You can log on to our website at jvmi.tv. God loves you, and so do we. I want to close with Psalm 122.6, which says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. And speaking of Jerusalem, that reminds me, we're going to Jerusalem next May to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the restoration of Jerusalem. We'll be right there at the Western Wall with thousands of Israelis to celebrate. Join Jewish Voice Ministries as we tour the Holy Land and celebrate Israel 2017. On this trip, you'll stay in five-star accommodations as we tour Nazareth, Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, and more. You can renew your marriage vows on the Sea of Galilee and participate in an immersion ceremony at the Jordan River. Call and speak with our events coordinator to learn more exciting details about Celebrate Israel 2017. I hope you can join me and my family next year in Jerusalem. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Vernis saying shalom and God bless you. <laughs>